um so yeah so this is our social hour. what we're gonna do and is we're gonna ask um you guys uh you know ask us any questions right that we can answer for sure and what we're gonna be doing is just kind of having a chat we have some special guests that are gonna join us uh, a little later in the hour that uh, have agreed to come on the show and you 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 know they're you open for questions also but uh you know makes it here so we're gonna go first and uh, just introduce everybody saying hello and, and I, I know the that... only thing I want to know is is what what Cesar is drinking. Mm? Oh, uh, there you go. Introduce. <laughs> how hot is it? Uh, Introduce uh, from uh, what you're what's drinking, happening? what you having. This could be an AS- ASMR kind of show. <laughs> well, you know, there isn't <laughs> much you know going on. There isn't a, and it's it's a weekend. There's not much soccer. So you know, why not have a beer? Why not have something uh, from Goliath Brewing? It's it's an IPA. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Tom, you want to be untapped? What was that? Oh, no. Look at this horrible I pour. I haven't checked it on tap. I also checked out Weasel's beer. That's awesome. But yeah, but just uh, staying safe, staying at home forever. I decided to uh, finally give in and download Football Manager. So we'll see how I do running PSV. Uh, yeah, yeah. H- happy to be chatting with all of you guys because I feel we all needed like an excuse just to like hang out and like give our listeners, give our viewers just something to do right like i so, so, no, so I'm, I'm i'm looking forward to just I'm looking forward to just like kind of hanging out with you guys <laughs> show us your butt your mug or your uh <laughs> you what no Whoa. mug <laughs> like a mug <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna get spicy it's only, it's only the fourth minute it's it's <laughs> gonna get spicy here in this do you have like a like a mug or you do just on tap is it just a beer someone like clip that or like <laughs> <laughs> All right, all right, we'll go over to uh, there. It is okay. Okay, so it's just it's a regular can. Got it. Got it. There we go. All right, we'll go over to Miss Adriana Terraza so there in La Ciudad de Mexico, who hasn't been feeling well, but we're happy that she has at least a voice and can come and say hello. Yeah, th- this is like ninety percent of my voice, so I'm so I'm so happy right now because people couldn't understand me. I was like a parrot on Monday with like this like the squeaky sounds and just like trying to make people like understand me. It was it was yeah it was pathetic. So I'm happy to be with you guys. Um, yeah, kind of weird circumstances, um, but always great to have you. Obviously, I can't have whatever you guys are drinking, but cheers. <laughs> Wait. Isn't it like, you know, you can have some alcohol during when you're really, really, uh, you know, your throat's supposed to help and all that? I, like Apparently tequila, I mean, okay, no. Apparently, I think mezcal is what I've heard most people say, but I don't really like mezcal, so I could change that for tequila, maybe. Um, but yeah, that seems that I think that's the way to go now because, you know, medicine is expensive and you just, I don't know, it, it somehow seems like I'll, I'll be doing my, my body like a benefit of having tequila rather than just like all these medicines. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. We're already having some people saying shout out, Sports Genius shout out from Chicago. We have Alex Dusna, good evening from Indiana. All right, guys, lots of people. Yeah. Alejandro specifically said, sup, Cesar. So it's already Alejandro okay. getting some nice uh, love on there. LAFC BNG, greetings from LA. So we got a lot of people already kind of joining us. And then Luis, I think was our first one, said, I'm here for the Dr. Mario breakdown. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, Adriana was playing lots of Mario. And also he said, I'm here for the Chivas talk. Okay, cool, cool. Uh, saying hello to everybody. We're going to go to Miss Amy, who I know is going in and out. Amy is uh, has a full house with uh, the kiddos there. But hopefully uh, they can come in and, and say hello. It's, I mean, it'd be, it'd be perfect. We'll see Nobody how it goes. Wants, no? Nobody wants that. No, no, no. no. Amy, what are you drinking? How are you? How are you? <laughs> I'm fine. I'm drinking a michelada as pure Mexican mom bratness would go. So. What kind? Is it like a mango one? Yeah. It's the uh, Estrella Jalisco Mango Golden Road one. It's very good. It's very, very good. I don't even know week- if we have those down oh. here. It makes my weekends much, much better. <laughs> <laughs> she says that with such a... Anyway, <laughs> Mr. Tom Marshall, and, and uh, who's got his blurred background, very uh, very bougie type, and he's not Look, the official. J- sorry, sorry, Jason's, Jason's awake. We should just invite him already. He's Jason, Jason, can we call you? Type on the chat. Dude, you just join in right here. Let us know so we can just call you. What I want to know, Tom, Tom Marshall, man of the people, what what beer are you drinking, right? Like, uh, what, man, man of the people, right? Right, right Tom? You know, what, what beer are you drinking? Uh, 
I'm drinking a, a Malbec. What? It could have wine me. A little wine time. A little, a little wine? What kind of wine? I don't really know. <laughs> Jason rejected us. That's so I weird. think he did. Yeah. Yeah. I think he not did. Really sure. I think he did. You usually go for the Malbec. That's probably not pronounced Malbec. And uh, yeah, so yeah, no, all good. Mexico City seems like things are closing down a little bit now, so you know, um, you know, things are, I think, changing pretty quickly. From you know, let's let's not forget that this time in seven days ago we were watching games. Yeah. You know, we were watching you know games, and we were preparing for the for the for the Clásico Joven on on the Sunday. So it's like I don't know. It just seems to everything seems to have happened so quickly, yeah. um, and even. You know, even the last couple of days, it's like, you know, Enrique Bonilla, like, that was a major shot last night where, you know, there wasn't even any rumours beforehand. It wasn't kind of, you know, apparently he hadn't even had any symptoms. And then he just got the check for the for coronavirus just to, you know, because he'd been to Spain. So he was like, right, I better check, you know, get check, checked out because obviously I'm going to be in contact with, with people around Mexican football. So, you know, he carries out the check and he's positive And then all of a sudden, I don't know, I think it... I know uh, Marrero, the, the the Atletico San Luis president, had, had tested pre- uh, po- positive early in the week. But I think the fact that it was Bonilla, you know, the head, the president of the old league. I don't know. I just I just think like people in Mexico suddenly just started, you know, taking sat up basically and like, you know, what's going on here? This is uh, this is this is serious, you know. Um, but yeah, it's <laughs> yeah, it's been. Uh, it's been interesting. Obviously, Adriana there as well. You know, the, there's a lot of criticism about how the thing's been handled, and you know, it's been uh, yeah, it's been a, a crazy, crazy last week or so. Wow. Yeah, like still, like like a week ago, we were still having games on Friday, like with audiences and crowds in the stadiums, and then all of a sudden, like halfway, like at noon on so- on Saturday, um, they just said, okay, no, we're just gonna end up like whatever happens this jornada. And then just like, like a little bit later, they were like, okay, never mind. Because there was also this rumor about the league wanting to play midweek games. And that was just crazy. I was like, dude, we're already getting criticized because the league hasn't just avoided the crowds at the stadiums. Mm-hmm. And we still want to have more games midweek. And fortunately, that, that didn't happen. But still, it was kind of like we had to like be, like to be shoved into the decision and not something just to prevent any more cases from coming up. So that was just crazy. I feel, like, I feel like we got we got to finish the league. So, I mean, I know obviously what's the priority here is obviously everybody's health. So I think that everybody is obviously just like stay at home. I think you just do a whole shelter at home thing seems like it's it's the most significant thing right now. But once everything gets back to normal, whether it's uh, a couple months or several months, we don't know. We're not doctors, you know. But once everything's back to normal, I feel like the priority should be to have the league finished, right? I'm not. I don't know. I don't know if, how you guys feel, but like I feel like. Even if it means shortening or canceling the next season, I feel like you've got to finish the current season, right? Yeah, I just I think, don't know uh, how. Yeah. yeah, I think I think David Medrano um, sent out a tweet today saying that saying that basically the club want to finish the regular season. That there was some there was an idea from the league that you just go straight to a Liga. You know what I mean? And then you just have a separate tournament and where the, I don't know. Obviously, I imagine it'd be where the teams are right now. You just automatically go into a Liga. And then you work out the champion there. Honestly, I won't be at all surprised if in 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 time the decision decision that you just cancel this tournament. I'm I'm not saying it, it'd be necessarily my favorite, but it's just like because it's because it's not a, a normal league where the, you finish first and then you win the title. I don't know. I just feel like there's a bit a little bit of leeway. And at the end of the day, if this kind of not blows over but comes to an end by like June July. Then you can still start the next season, and there's not mm. obviously the, the economic damage that's already done and the games that you've lost, which is a big factor. You know the TV and the sponsorship. You know they, they'll want those games to be played because they want they want people watching. They want to be able to. But I don't know. It might it, the easiest option might just be like right, we're starting again in you know mid July, whenever the the new season starts. But I don't know. I don't. I don't know the rest of you. I feel like you got you got to finish the season even if it means that the next season's canceled i feel like you got to finish what's already kind of started even if it means just jumping straight into the playoffs even if it means uh like i said just uh, canceling the entirety of the next season i feel like because the competition already started you have to finish it 
and even if that means a, a delay of another tournament. I don't, I don't know how the rest of you feel, but... It's always going to be if, let's say, they just end it and crown, just like LAFC, BNG said, our Cruz Azul champions, that comment right there. It's it's always going to be an asterisk if they give the, the, the league to that to the team that's on top right now. And, <clears throat> you know, it, it, I think something has to be done. If it's a quick playoff that they're going to do, um, I'm still leaning. I think everything is just going to be pushed back. Um in all aspects of, of, of sporting, of, of our lives, that I feel like these next two months or whatever, however long we're going to take, is just kind of a hold off. And then schedules are all going to be kind of taken from school to to even, you know, to, to sports. So I think the, the season is going to continue going, maybe shortening it up, not so many games and then playoffs, and then hopefully having another season by the end of the year or completely waiting um, until maybe the next season and, and finding a way because I can already see if whatever they champion, you know, the, the teams all over the world, and you know, that everyone's going to have that asterisk. And it's kind of, I think everyone's yeah. going to be looking at what Europe is doing, don't you think? Like, I know yeah. we have yeah. the, the two different yeah. formats of, of, of our seasons, but whatever league starts doing it first, if it's the Premier League or the Le- or Italian League or the Spanish League, I think people are going to start looking at that. It's like a big domino. Yeah, yeah no, and... A lot depends on FIFA as well. I mean, FIFA have to make some big decisions specifically with regards to the contracts of players because a lot of contracts ends on, on June 30th. So any, yeah. any season that goes beyond that date, then what do you do? The players is, you know, doesn't, have a, isn't, doesn't belong to that club anymore if the contract runs out. And so I think FIFA has to, has to kind of come in there as well. But, um, but yeah, no, you're right. We saw with the, with the European example as well because obviously it's not just the league. I mean, this extends to the CONCAF Champions League. I mean, who's going to qualify for the League's Cup next year? I mean, yeah. the, you know, the big questions. I don't know. I think on our list of priorities. League's Cup but, qualifications, probably. But, but, I mean, but I, mean, it's, I, mean, I mean, serious in terms of, you know, the CONCAF Champions League is still going on. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, what happens with that? And then what happens with the next yeah. edition? So people have to qualify for that. There has to be... You have to find... It's not the most important thing, obviously... But you have to find um, solutions for those things. But Adriana, what what have you been hearing down there in um, Televisa HQ? <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, the sh- the gloves are off. Well, I'm take away Tom's one. No, he's. <laughs> I think nobody. I mean, I think for for interest for TV and everything like economical that just stands behind the league. I mean, everyone just wants that to happen. I think right now people were kind of optimistic the first week. Um, because they were saying, well, just remember, we had FIFA friendlies next week, so let's just imagine that that's that, and then we could have like, I don't know, like midweek games, and then compensate all those all those other games, which would totally be crazy. I mean, it could be it's doable, but I don't I don't think teams would be up to it because they complain when they have so many midweek games. I think they want to salvage the season somehow because, <laughs> sadly enough, this is the season that Cruz Azul is doing so well. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's just yeah I mean I I'm pretty sure they don't want to get the championship just because they're first no. place right now yeah um and the thing that's that's also really interesting is imagine if we had relegation this season I mean we yeah. don't fortunately but if we did that well, would be like a huge huge thing to decide because obviously I mean it would be totally unfair for for whatever decision they take it's all a conspiracy yeah <laughs> <laughs> um as a Leon fan right it's like if, if Cruz Azul lost that game. We would have been first, and then they would have told us, "You, uh, you here you go." It's like I kind of wouldn't, wouldn't want this championship like that, you know, to just here you go, you have it. So I still, th- I don't, I really don't think that they're gonna, they're just gonna give the, the championship just so another season would start, and this will be like Cruz Azul will have how many titles? I know, I know, it's Leon would have seven. It'd be it'd kind of, way. So it's kind of like it's like you know, however many, and then one. Not necessarily working. So, Jason, Jason, I mean, even though Jason said he won't take our call, he did have a, a good a little idea here. Good on the friend. Track. Great <laughs> friend. <laughs> he said, uh, <laughs> Jason said, carry points into next season to give those in the lead a head start toward Ligia qualification. That's that's not the worst idea. That's, that's, that's not and somehow idea. Rayados can still make Ligia. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, Ankel on the chat says, let's see what Globe the Quedibles do and go from there. <laughs> there's gonna be there's gonna be a mad solution of the yeah. you can almost oh, get yeah. That. well <laughs> yeah because like next season since it's the beginning of the, of the soccer year we were also gonna have like less foreign players remember in, in Liga MX yeah. but if the contracts don't end in May and they can't tr- transfer to another league I have no idea what that 
yeah, like the implications of that. I mean, they're supposed to have like less foreigners um, this next season. Yeah, and and also the you know the debate over promotion relegation. I mean, the league sent out a statement saying, you know, the day before Bonilla's mm-hmm. test came through, basically saying, no, oh, all of that's on hold right now. Like, you know, we 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 need to get through this, and then we'll you know talk about it again. So, but I mean, that was going to start next season. Yeah. I mean, the reason they wanted to get it sorted now in March is so that the next season, it's all in place. So, it's like, how is that going to happen? And I don't know. I've, I've actually been surprised by the. Not a surprise, but the second division clubs and the players, along with the Association of Mexican Footballers, they they, they look like they're gonna kick up a fuss. You know what I mean? I, I thought I thought Liga MX would be able to get the way and close it off quite easily, but it looks like the second division clubs now are gonna aren't you know, they're not messing around with this. I mean I don't know. I don't know how Liga MX thought it'd be yeah. so easy to just be like, hey, you know, let's, you know, just nah, just close up, and then you can't get rele- you can't get promoted. But don't worry about it. You know what I mean? You have to give him a carrot. I mean, you're basically telling him you've got no chance of getting into the first division. You have to kind of, I don't know, I don't know what you know kind of carrot there is to kind of um, to kind of incentivize them to you know to to agree to the changes. But at some point they're going to have to. They're gonna to have to provide something. It might it might just be financial, to be honest. Yeah, we'll see what's gonna yeah. happen. Whatever happens, it's gonna be crazy. No, and not everybody's gonna be happy, and it's gonna be one of those like tough whatever. By the way, I am drinking Dos Equis just because I'm all out of like any other beer, and I saw it. I need, I went downstairs <laughs> to try to get another beer, but I would like to add that I have this cool uh, looking... That's dope, man. That's super cool. Check it out. Apparently, this is like very like limited edition. I got it in 2006 in uh, Germany during the World Cup and they were like giving some kind of collectors and somebody brought it for me and grabbed it and I need to know the story more often. But anyway, um, I'm using it, so that's what I'm using today. I'm jealous. It looks awesome. All right. um, We're going to... Take a little pause on our Liga MX talk, and we're going to reach out to a friend of the Mexican soccer show who's also be a part of the Mexican soccer show. our first guest, and we're going to call her right now. Hopefully, she is uh, she's going to join us, and she doesn't she's not like Jason and tells us that she's not going to. We still love you, Jason. Yeah. Whatever, Jason. <laughs> let's see. So, I'm, in the meantime, let's see I'm if we can reach her. right now, Jason. <laughs> Scotty, there we go. It is you know her from the Lions Den. We're all back together again. Podcast. Yeah. And we're calling, so we're gonna see if she's able to uh, to join us on the on it. But in the meantime, um, you can just pretend that I'm Scotty. Hello, I'm Scotty. Uh, <laughs> I'm part of the Lions Den. Hey, Kelly, what do you think of Leon? <laughs> all right. There it is. I think she has joined us. Let me see. Can see me? We can hear Hi, you. Yeah. I can hear you. What are you drink, Scotty? Gotti, let's see. Hey, Gotti. Hey, guys. All right, so for those of you guys that are in the in the podcast, there it is. So you can drag her on Skype. You can gra- you can drag her and move her over into your screen for those of you. So let me see if I can get her on the actual stream. Ta da! Like there she is. She that. is there. Where am I? All right. Uh, <laughs> Cardi, are you watching the screen? You should be there. There you go. There you go. There you go. Cardi, she look at her. In the background, you have her Esmeralda. Everything she's all everything Leon because obviously she does the Lions and <laughs> podcast. So if you don't know Cardi, she's an uh, amazing friend of the show and myself. Also, there's not a week goes by that we're always joking around on WhatsApp and fighting about Leon. But most importantly, she does an amazing podcast called The Lion's Den, probably one of the best live podcasts that I've seen produced uh, research-wise, and because it's my team, um, I'm going to say it's one of the best ones. But, uh, Kari, uh, uh, welcome to the Mexican talk Show Social Quarantena Hour. Uh, you're our first guest. <laughs> Quarantena Hour. <laughs> Quarantine Hour. Uh, how are you? I don't know why people are freaking out. I'm a homebody. Like, I do this on a daily basis, so people are just freaking out, but... I'm doing the best I can, you know, just I have some M&Ms. I was drinking some blueberry lemonade earlier. I had beers last night, you know, just keeping it, Craziness. keeping it cool. Yeah. Good, good, good. You had blueberry lemonade and blueberry and blue M&Ms? They're not, they're not blue. They're hazelnut spread. Oh. M&Ms. Okay. The okay. fancy ones. I also- picked them out because yesterday I went grocery shopping and that was, that was not fun. 
Oh, also, okay. The Lions Done podcast must be the, the League of Mikey's English like podcast with the most like high profile like regular contributor, yeah. right? Is Marcelo Bobo? He's basically like a member of your show now, right? I, I feel mean, like he just... he's like our our godfather, basically. I like to baptize <laughs> baptize him. Like, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, whenever we started this project, um, I it was funny because I was telling Tom Marshall. I don't know if you remember that conversation we had back in Dallas. I was like, hey, Tom, I had this idea, like about, you know, making this Leon one. Um, but yeah, he, yeah. He, he was just like, yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah, whatever. Just, don't like, do it. it. <laughs> it's not going to work. No, no. Classic oh, Tom. Tom. Don't bother. It's too small. <laughs> 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 Basically, throw, here's here the shade comes out. The shade. I'm kidding. Um, but yeah, so it was great whenever it came to live. And, you know, it's been it's been good. I feel like he's been sending her we've been setting little short-term goals. Um, but we've always had this idea of inviting people on. So mm -hmm. we definitely, um, saw Marcelo was watching us at one point, he was engaging with us. So we decided to reach out and, you know, especially when Leon was in CCL, it just all came to live and he came back to back to back. Um, so definitely he's like a regular, he enjoys the show. Um, he's a very awesome person and he was supposed to come to Dallas for the Mexico game. So I was, so stoked to finally meet him in person but obviously that got canceled but um yeah he's i want to say he's like a godfather for our, our show he's a very great person and we're only going to shoot up high and get more people on so the so, question is are you going to get mr landon donovan on the on the show since <laughs> you know u.s soccer players leon i mean this is, he's next right I'm not going to spoil a couple of things we have in the okay. works. Oh. So uh, okay. we're, we're, we're shooting for different people. Um, you know, I we're shooting for <laughs> amazing people. Um, Fernando Navarro <laughs> speaks English and he told us that he wants to do more stuff in English. So there you go. A player. Yeah, we, awesome. We have a couple of uh, people that we're, we're taking consideration. Um, so, you know, I feel like I have a great team um, with, for the pod. They've been awesome from the, the beginning. Exclusive to you. Yeah. We brought you on for the exclusive. Yeah. So we'll give you advice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got a couple of of of, uh, of comments for Cadi. The Tal Carlos says, "Don't let sh don't let this show distract you from the fact that Leon blew a two zero lead to LAFC." Hey, man. Wow. Take it all right, all right, all right, all right. All right. Oh, and then God, really quick, so a fun question, and Katie, Katie can also answer this. Uh, fun question to the crew. What's the Mex the best Mexican beer? So what does everybody say on... Uh, Negro Bodelo, because <laughs> it's a very good meal beer. I feel like it, it pairs... When it comes to beers. Watch out. <laughs> 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 I feel like that's a, I feel like that's my, my favorite Mexican beer. Yeah. Tom? No. Oh, Tom? Oh, too much pressure. Tom, too oh, much oh. pressure. Oh. Adriana? Okay. I like there there's one that we only get uh, during Christmas. I have no idea why. This is like one of those weird things. It's like eggnog. Um, but it's called Noche Buena. And they only sell it like during Christmas time, who, which is who makes so, but it's it? really, really good. Uh, I have no idea. I'll have to Google it. I don't know, but you, I usually go like to the supermarket. And whenever I see it's out, it's like, oh, it's here. And then you just get like a box. All right, all right. Like a six pack or something. Um, but yeah, they only sell it during Christmas time. Amy? Okay, I'll go for Oh, no, wait. Tom. Minerva. Wait, like Tom's Minerva. answering now. Minerva. Okay. Is that like a Guadalajara <laughs> beer? Yes. Got it. Got it. Got it. Uh, Amy? This is. Um unfortunate given in the, the circumstances, times circumstances but, but uh, a, a corona is what i like to drink <laughs> oh, god. Get out of here. oh <laughs> my gosh you couldn't even <laughs> so, and Cotty. he only that question oh, was ahead. only asked for this reason uh, um i have a couple and people can criticize me all they want but i feel like i could drink more because of it so it's either corona light tecate light and pacifico light it's all like <laughs> team here there's a theme. Like I could drink more. Make a love, Ultron. I can drink more because they're not they're not gonna hit me like boom. Like it's like okay, 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 you know. Got it. I got it. Um, it's like when you have the lower weights so you can do more reps. You're like, hey, man. <laughs> perfect. You perfect. Always, like you know, Tom. He's a negro modelo type of person, like really dark. So he always makes fun of me whenever I'm drinking my light. I was like, well, look, I'm six in, so I'm feeling good. <laughs> 
<laughs> For a second, I thought you were talking I about I know, Tom me Marshall. too. I was like, Tom Marshall? Uh, cool, cool. <laughs> no, we got it. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Tom Harrison. Everybody knows the uh, yeah, the L3 Ang couple of the year. Let's say, uh, well, well, we'll keep it at that. <laughs> Wedding was postponed due to the circumstances. You were all very sad. Oh, <laughs> God. <laughs> For me. He's gonna regret. Kavi's gonna regret coming on here if we keep going on. <laughs> as long as we're invited to the wedding, that's all I care Dude, about. Dude, we're all there. That's really, y'all pressuring no. me. Live. Oh, a live <laughs> pressure. Bad. That's how it's it like, is. This is what we do. Can't go. All right, all right, all right. Kadi, thank you so much for joining us. It was um, uh, you know, I hope everything's doing. Anything you would like to say as far as everything that's going on? A message from Kadi to everyone on this uh. Quarantena, quarantines, social isolation. Here you go. The platform is yours before you we say goodbye. Um, stay safe. Wash your hands. Um, <laughs> you know, enjoy the time you have inside. I feel like you can get more done. You can exercise at home. You can learn a little new language at home. You know, just just do something with your life while it's on pause, pretty much, um, and just make the best out of it. Like. Watch Netflix, watch stuff you haven't done, you haven't watched before, do things that you haven't done. And yeah, so hopefully whenever this is done, we can all get back to Liga Mekis because, yeah, it's kind of, you know, I'm always complaining about a weekend without Leon playing um, if when it's like international break or whatever. And now it's kind of like, well, I don't know when I'm going to see Leon back. But yeah. Okay. Um, just all right. Kari, again, uh, uh, amazing. Thank you for joining us. Un abrazo from all of us. And uh, we'll see you again for sure. And we'll see what happens. Bye, Kari. Bye, miss. Bye, Kari. <laughs> Bye, guys. Stay safe. All right, well, there's Kari, who hopefully we get removed. And we'll got our, let me get my our next test. Talk amongst yourself. Cesar, you're the host. I'm going to try to get our next Wait, test going. hold on. A big... The cooligans, the soccer cooligans are on the chat. They're yeah, saying what's okay. up. There you go. Hi, guys. Oh. Say hello to... Hi, Christian. Hi, Alexis. There you it's go. The soccer cooligans, really, if you really know. Really, really cool. Really cool podcast that also focuses... <laughs> is, like, is Amy drunk Google already? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I got to get I gotta get our next guest. So, Cesar, you're, all, you're hosting. Go for it. Okay, okay. So let's uh, talk about our top five favorite cats. I think easily number one, Garfield, for cultural significance. Uh, uh. I told you about this before. So that's just, uh... number two. <laughs> the sad part is he's not he's not kidding. There's a definitely a top five cats list out well, the there fu- somewhere. The fun thing is, like, I mean, right now I've been like, we will have like so much free time that like I've been like trying to think of like new things to do. And I think the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create like. A very deep, very detailed uh, primary, secondary, and tertiary power rankings list of all like all the different characters from The Office. I think that's just what. Be, <laughs> like, that's don't just, you, that's, but that's don't you like. already have? You already have like a power rankings list, don't yeah, you? Or are you thinking like? It, well, let's go deep here because I only have the primary true. list. No, go but back I, to the cats. Go back to the cats. <laughs> 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 all right. Well, we're calling our next guest. So while that is happening. By the way, Bohemia is the one that makes the Nochebuena beer. So I'll have to send there you guys. Go. There we go. There he is, Mr. Eugene Rapinski from uh, FMF State of Mind, Food Next Nation. A big fan of the show. Eugene, how are you doing, sir? Doing well. How are you guys doing? <laughs> good, good. You are doing Golazo de Gringo, correct? Am I getting that correct? Right? Yeah. That, that would be me. Yes, 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 yes. All right, all right. First off, we're going to go ahead and interview you say, what is your favorite Mexican beer? Oh, man, that's tough. I uh, I stopped drinking like five years ago. Okay, so, never mind. Um, <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> if, if coronavirus don't make you feel bad, I, I will. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I liked um, I liked uh, Negro Modelo when I drank. Okay, oh, that there was, you go. That was, Negro that was good good. Oh man, uh, Eugene, thank you for joining us as our second guest. Uh, I remember, um, you know, I have to say just special thanks to you when we did our Patreon. You were our very first contributor in Patreon. Yeah. Um, and you were like, "This is awesome. Thank you." And uh, I, you've always since you know since I can remember have been. Just uh, an awesome friend to all of us in the Mexican soccer show, sharing our stuff and being part of it. Now I get a chance to work with you at Food Mex Nation. So just a big thank you, Eugene, of everything that you do, man. Yeah, no, thanks to you guys. I mean, um, you know, I'm, I'm happy to 
be in a position where I can support my friends and support Mexican <laughs> soccer. And, you know, uh, I'm, I'm happy to do it. And I'm happy to be uh, working with you guys. And it's, it's been awesome. <laughs> Who's your team, Eugene? Have you got a team in Mexico or... Um, yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Pumas fan. Um, oh. have been, uh, yeah, that, that always gets that kind of reaction. Like, oh. Oh, oh, yeah. okay. um, so, but, um, yeah, no, I mean, they're, uh, they're, they're the ones that I root for, but I, I certainly, uh, have grown fond of, of Tijuana and Santos, you know, from covering them. So Eugene, how, how did you stumble upon in Mexican soccer? And we're always trying to you know, obviously, or I mean, if I can think of my parents or Amy's or, you know, Tom, you know, and his, his mission. But to you, sure. how did all of a sudden become Mexican soccer and how you started like writing and following it? Oh, man. So you only gave me five minutes and this is, this is a very, <laughs> all very right, all right. long story. I'll, 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 try and boil it. I'll try and boil it down. Um, I, I grew up in Florida, so I watched soccer. I, I really kind of got into soccer with the 94 World Cup. And then it was gone. And I was like, oh, God, like, where can I watch more of this? And um, luckily, we got uh, the, the Spanish language channels down there. Um, so I was able to tune in and see Mexican soccer and, and kind of like keep up with it. Um, always kind of watched it here and there. Um, you know, fast forward to um, 2009, 2010, 11 ish. I don't know. I was on Twitter and was tweeting about Mexican soccer and somebody said, you should start a blog. And I said, I will, I'll do it. Fine. <laughs> As we uh, all have. <laughs> so, um, once in our lives, started, Karna, uh, started doing that. And then, um, you know, here I am. What was the name of the blog? Uh, it was Golazo del Gringo. That's uh, probably still out there. It was a really terrible yeah. WordPress, um, <laughs> kind of thing. Right. But, um, I think a lot yeah. of us did that, that though, right? Yeah, it's crazy because, you know, Cesar had the Big Verde, you know? Yeah. The big Verde. That was on <laughs> Tumblr. I don't know why it was on Tumblr. <laughs> oh, I know, all right. Amy had so just, uh, Analyzing the Aztecs. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I had, I think I had Mexico World Cup. Yeah. Blogspot. Yeah. Okay. That's how it started. Blogspot, started. we had Tumblr. Did anyone have a live journal or something like that? Like... <laughs> no, I think mine was blo- I think mine was Blogspot or it was like WordPress before I actually bought the domain. I actually just still have it, just like for personal just reasons. Because in, yeah. in, in all seriousness, that, that's like awesome. It's, you know, I, I'm like an old punk rock guy, and I've always been with that kind of do-it-yourself ethic. And uh, if, if there's, you know, my my thing was always there's not a whole lot of people who are doing this who are covering this in English. I'm just going to do it myself. That's and, awesome. You know, I, I've always had respect for people who who do that. So, um, I, mean, yeah. I think it's a general. I mean, it's it's different. It's different paths, but kind of getting to the same destination, right? Because I thought, and this, I mean, you, you must have started way before I did, right? But it was like, I thought that when I was in undergrad, you know, in college, like nobody else is doing this. Little did I know there was already a whole hub of you guys doing it. But it's just oh, an yeah, idea that, that still that you it's think. still something for me that it's not. Um, you know, it's not. It's not something that's established. You know what I mean? I think that's the that that's the thing about it. It's like a lot of people and even the major, you know, major outlets are like, oh, me- Mexican soccer in English. Like sometimes they dipped into it, dipped out of it, but it's like it's not established. It's not on the agenda, and yeah. still it's 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 got it's got a lot better than it was like seven eight years ago, hundred percent. Because there are people doing it back there. You know? was... Yeah, like we saw you you run big soccer, no, and and there's a lot of people always yeah. doing stuff, and on our friend Jolie. He used to write write stories at goal and stuff. So it's it has happened, but it's just like because it's not established, there's no there's no kind of route towards getting into it, if you know what I mean. Yeah. It's like it's kind of a, a big unknown. It doesn't it doesn't fit into these neat little boxes that everybody's yeah. kind of accustomed to. You know, the English language media and soccer is always focused on England and MLS, and that's really kind of it. Uh, you know, the, the Mexican soccer media is always Messi and Ronaldo, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Messi, and... Messi sneezed today, like Ronaldo <laughs> like, posted something on Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> Look how hard Ronaldo works. Like, you yeah. Know, so... <laughs> but, but yeah, but yeah. yeah, more people are tuning in every week to watching the Mexican league than than any other league in the States. That's the yeah. that's for me yeah. is the, the crux of the issue. You know, how do you translate? you know, that fact to, to more coverage in English. You know what I mean? That's the, for me, that's the, that's the difficult kind of conundrum yeah. that all of us that are working in this kind of have to, have to kind of navigate. 
Oh, for sure. Yeah. And sometimes it's it's like screaming at a wall. You're you're like you know there. This constantly outdraws every other soccer uh, event on television, with maybe the exception of the Women's World Cup. Why why won't anyone else pay attention? Like you know like you tune in, check it out. Like you might actually like this. Like if you give it a chance, you know. Um, I don't know. That's that's always been my kind of bent uh, as far as this goes. <laughs> Angel Martinez, I would think, says, what happened was Eugene walked into a small Mexican restaurant, had some bomb-ass tacos while they had a Pumas game on TV, and the story <laughs> went on from there. <laughs> no, no, Eugene, really appreciate it. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I think I was on Blogger in, like, 2002 with some other dumb blogs that I had about being alone or something like that, and dating <laughs> or something like that. But after that... Um, we got Mex and his poems. <laughs> My <laughs> poems, you know, back over there in the in the chat days of uh, America Online. But um yeah, it's 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 doing something about it and and I think we're seeing kind of like the same thing. We did it with blogs in like the early 20 2010s and now people are doing it with podcasts, right? Yeah. And it's like Cruz Azul or Lions Den and you know the guys at uh, uh, the, uh, the Americanista podcast and and the Chivas del Norte guys and the Paradero boys and it's kind of funny how like it all kind of changes, and we'll see what's going to be happening in five years. But that uh, L3 Ang, Liga MX Ang hashtag, we're seeing networks tweeting about it, which is, you know, the idea from the Mexican soccer show. Tom's like, hey, we should start kind of doing this. Let's start implementing it. And we're seeing it kind of grow. So that's what's kind of cool about it all. Yeah, I'll, I'll never forget the first night that they did an English language broadcast uh, I think it was America versus Chivas they did it uh, on Facebook live and just watching the numbers tick up and up and I was like okay maybe this is this will be cool if it hits like 5,000 oh, yeah. it was like 5,000 10,000 15 it got up to like 38,000 or something it's something ridiculous I was like oh my god like this is crazy like this is this is actually something that is you know, really just people are way more people are into it than, than I had ever really imagined. I thought it was, you know, me and you guys and, and a couple other people kind of shouting at each other on Twitter. Like, <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right, Mr. Eugene, uh, just thank you again for everything that you do. FMF State of Mind, all, all your articles. There are weekly articles with the Food Mex Nation and continue to do um, an awesome job and just being a proponent for a Liga MX L3 Ang family, brother. Hope everything is good. Stay safe. And, likewise uh, you guys do the same we'll see you again hopefully soon amigo yeah likewise all right all thanks, right Eugene. thanks Eugene. Bye, Eugene. cesar Bye, cesar take it over while i get our next caller okay so the reason why i think d'angelo vickers <laughs> is a is a better character uh on my tertiary power office power rankings list is being <laughs> by the way there was somebody on oh, the yeah. chat her name uh gabby i think she was like she did say, "Awesome, keep going with the uh, w with the office." <laughs> I mean, we need content, wait, right? Like, it's just... wait. Speaking of speaking, I'm uh, not wasting time, but I actually want to. Somebody was asking where Tom is from, so they said we know Tom's from England, but not sure what city. So I think it's time for a uh, Tom Marshall origin story. Wait! Oh, oh wait! Not yet! Right. Whoa! Whoa. Nice. <laughs> that, <laughs> that, came out, that came out quick, right there. Oh, before yes. we get that in, everybody, ladies and gentlemen, can we say hello to the the Naive Moran, uh, the godfather of L3 Liga MX, Ang, I would have to say, with along with, uh, with, with Tom. If there was a godfather movie about it, it's Mr. Naive Moran, who's there. <laughs> Naive's brother, how's it going? Naive, I miss your voice. I'm hey, so hey, Amy, Cesar, Tom, uh, we saw Adriana. Um, a pleasure, a pleasure, pleasure to be on the on the show tonight and uh, to share some time with y'all. Remember good old times, you know, yeah. that we shared uh, doing the show. Of course, some of the best memories and and of course, you know, yeah. Right now, it's just uh, a matter of uh, staying safe at home and um, and being aware of what's been told by the authorities and everyone that is out there, you know, and, and just following orders, kind of. So, Naive, now that you've crossed over to the other side, everybody wants to know. <laughs> it, it, is, is, the, is, the gap, is the gap closing between MLS and League of Legends? <laughs> <laughs> right there, right, right away. You gotta put yeah. the spot. By the way, I was like... I mean, it was kind of... You, you didn't have to answer. You didn't have to answer. By the way, Naive, tell us... First of all, a lot of people don't know. Tell us what you do now, man. Tell, tell us where you're yeah, at. We're all excited. People, tell the people, man. Yeah. No, no, I think uh, nowadays is, um, you know, I work with uh, content and the New York Red Bulls, so try to 
two stories right now, for example, that we don't have a league going on. You know, it's it's looking at history of the club and talking to former players and and doing those articles in Spanish and also, you know, doing them in English. So it's kind of working on both sides. But, you know, a lot of the social media perspective, you know, Instagram, Twitter, you know, working with that. And um, um, but mainly it's just trying to get the voice out, you know, of the team in Spanish. That's one of the main goals. So. Um, yeah, so far so good. And when it when it comes to the gap thing, I mean, you know, <laughs> it, it, it's, still, it, it's one of those things that um, it, it's the the both leagues are going to be so interconnected in the following years that you can already kind of tell a little bit um, that um, it, it is it is something that is you know it's, it's that debate that's out there. But you know, at the moment, what you can say is that you know there's one league that has been historically winning all of the titles uh, when it comes to CONCACAF and that's Liga MX, you know, and MLS, I think, is making bold moves to get to that stage, you know. Cool, cool. Naive to take... Uh... <laughs> What's your favorite Mexican beer? Pacifico. <laughs> all right, all right. Pacifico, Everybody yeah, to... Nice, 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 nice. Um, all right, guys, we have Naive here. What else, Tom? What else, Tom? What else? Naive's more of a wine guy, though. He is more of a wine guy. Yeah. Is he? It is. I'm, I'm more, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm more with wine. I mean, I, I kind of usually go with um, Rivera del Duero. So all the wines from Rivera del Duero in Spain, from Spain, those are usually the ones I go to. Uh, but the other time I was at Tom, I had one from Madrid um, that was really good. So I was pretty surprised over there in Arizona. I was like, whoa, whoa. This is actually good wine in Madrid. <laughs> Naive. Say, it's just nice. It's just nice to hear naive voice in the Mexican soccer show again. That's all I'm gonna say. Right? <laughs> I, I'd have to say that I'm gonna prob- be part of that. If we all, if we had like a radio show and Naive wasn't part of it, it's like he's got the best radio show, uh, radio voice that we have. Naive, tell us a story. What do you think of like what is the as far as your journalism? You've been everywhere in you know obviously in the U.S., New York. I've taken you to Spain and Mexico. Um, Think of like what's the, your happiest moment as far as a journalist, and that you could say in in your last you know ten years. I know that you've been doing this for a while now, um, but what was a moment that you were just like, okay, this is the the epitome of, of like of what I'm doing. Well, no pressure, by the way. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, there's been so many. I mean, it's 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 quite crazy when I think about them. Um, you know, for example, when Giovanni Los Santos scored a free kick goal at Santiago Bernabeu. Yeah, uh, and I was there, and you know, a colleague of mine, Paula Nunez Valbuena, was there with me as well, uh, and that was pretty neat to just see it live. Um, every single Carlos Vela game that I was able to see, and yeah, you were there, was pretty, yeah. pretty special. Uh, so you know, the Cuauhtémoc Blanco retirement, uh, when when you know the the game against Morelia, that was pretty oh, special. He almost Azteca. scored. And he almost oh, that would have been amazing. Oh, that was man. incredible. Hit the crossbar. I can't believe it. Hit the yeah, crossbar yeah. too, of course, with all the, the stuff that went around there. Um, what are the big one that I can sort of uh, at the top of my head? Um, you know, there's the case que Honda Pachuca was pretty special. I think yeah. uh, how everything just came about. You know, everything with the with the whole uh, story of him coming and picking Pachuca and. Like the meetings that they had with uh, Martinez in in California for him to come to Mexico, uh, those were those were interesting. And, you know, the the home opener for me, the 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 Red Bulls against Cincinnati just recently, uh, just to be from that side of the of the ball, you know, just being with the club and seeing everything that happens before and after a, a game is just it's it's crazy. It's one of those things that it just you 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 go into the stadium. And you just focus on that game, and then the game happens. It just like goes in light speed, like it's the fastest thing. And then afterwards, you gotta produce stuff and everything. <laughs> so I mean, those are those are kind of the stories. And when La Selección, I think, um, you know, the Centenario coverage, I think, in 2016 was pretty fun to do. Yeah. Um, the games that they played at Azteca uh, in the World Cup qualifiers, I think, the one that I had a chance to do was Canada against Canada. Um, and at the time, Chucky was kind of like, yeah, b- b- getting the attention, and um, you know, and also the, the seeing Diego Lainez's debut in León was also another special one for me. Uh, in León, and the first division debut for Lainez was also pretty cool. Every time I, I had a chance to go to León, to be honest, not because Weiss was on the show, but 
Leon, <laughs> Leon for me uh, was was one of the most special places for me to to cover a game, even though there was like no press box and stuff, <laughs> but just the atmosphere. <laughs> Bro, one time, one time I like I started talking to one of the um, um, sacerdotes de Leon. Like he would go to the games, and oh, like right. we just started talking about the the team and like how everything had come about when they were like in second division. So like th- th- it's just phenomenal stories there in Leon all the time. Yeah, good, they, good, it was good. always funny in Leon. They, they have got now a press box which is pretty <laughs> oh. near the pitch in the middle. But before they didn't, and it was like no one would really know where the press box is. But in the corner, they kind of kind of just have like a, a few rows of seats that were just for the press, but like just mixed in with everybody. And it like yeah. like literally no plugs, no internet, no nothing. But then the <laughs> other option, if you ask people, they'd be like, oh yeah, or you or you can go on the roof. So like, I used to, I used to go on the roof. <laughs> It was awesome. <laughs> you just you used to climb up, and because that, that's obviously where all the cameras are and all that. So they just, I don't know, they assume like you press. So I don't know. It was, it was absolutely amazing on the roof, and then uh, um, I don't know. It's crazy though. Like, but that, that's what I was going to ask you though, Naive. I know, I know you can't talk loads about it, but just from the media side, from working on the media side in Mexico, and you know, we talked about it a lot. The challenges of kind of you know getting access, interviews, like just doing your job basically, and doing like you know making good co- content. Pre- producing good stories in Mexico and, and you know, it's, it's a challenge, you know what I mean? Um, how does that compare with what you've seen? Obviously, you're on the other side, so you're not, you know, you're not pitching stories to clubs, you're inside the club doing stories, but from what you've seen, how different do you think it is up there? No, I mean, I think, uh, you know, the difference is it's just the idea of understanding the dimension a story can have on a club. Of course, you got to know who you're giving that opportunity to uh, when it comes to, like, an exclusive or whatnot, but when it comes to just uh, getting your club out there and your players out there, you know, I think there's a mechanism that is quicker, you know, it's it's kind of like, okay, we got this uh, uh, journalist that wants to do a story with us, let's try to make uh, our part and make it happen, you know, type of deal. But, you know, that's every every club works differently, as you've seen in, in Mexico. I mean, you have cases like Santos, for example, that it's like right away, you know, you, you get the yeah. you schedule the interview and it happens, you know, and, Shout and, out there's, to Kim a, Tate. Yeah. <laughs> and there's things like that, 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 that are, that are pretty notorious and they're very well executed in Mexico. You no. Know? And I know that there might be other clubs out there that I haven't, didn't have the pleasure to work with, but, um, you know, I think it's just a matter of, of being more open, no, especially when you, when you have like, um, international media that is actually interested in, in, in making a story about your club. So, I mean, I think that's one of the things about... Was it was it Javier Aguirre this week that said, like, <laughs> that in Spain they know more about MLS than Liga Mex? I yeah. mean, yeah. that's that's yeah. become more common nowadays to hear uh, Mexican figures of that sort to just blurt that out, no? And and it goes yeah, with no, that, no. you know? Yeah. I always think, you know, you look at some of the younger Mexican players and sometimes I think you've not, like, Macias... I've not seen a good story about Macias. Yeah. Like, I've not seen a story that says this guy, you know, you hear things like, oh, this guy prepares really well, this guy does that. I've not seen a story that kind of goes into what he's all about or or even, you know, Roberto Alvarado. I mean, he made his debut at 15. He's from, like, a small town, I think, in Guanajuato. I mean, that kind of profile of players that I don't think you see in Mexico. And I think it's cultural as well in terms of the way the media works, but it's also like you don't get the access. You know, if you ask for a Mexican club for, oh, I need 30 minutes to speak to a player, you know, to properly speak to a player, then they're like, what? Like, no, like, we only do 10 minutes max. And it's like, well, we're, you're just going to get the boring questions then about the next game and, the, you know, the, the season coming up and the manager. And But uh, but what do you think, Adriana, same same question? Because, you know, we I, I saw you recently over there in Houston. Um, you know, you are obviously working for Tulliene. Um you know, and obviously there's the issues of rights, and it does help when you got rights. But just in general, what's your kind of take on you know working within in Mexico as a journalist, and then um, and then obviously working in in MLS? And I don't I don't know like, I don't know if some people know what you actually do, but you actually got a really high profile job, no, within within to the end. What do you do, Adriana? Why don't you tell us? <laughs> She's a big deal, guys. She's a big deal. I just sit around. No, seriously, like no, seriously, like at MLS Media Day, like. Like people were like, no, she's she's my boss. And I was like, yeah, but she's my friend. <laughs> la jefa, la jefa Adriana, la patrona. <laughs> um, well, yeah, I mean, re- regarding the differences between MLS and Liam, I'm 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 really surprised. I mean, I wish 
I was actually thinking this the other day. They should have like an exchange program for the press people. Like, like you get like the Tigres and Santos and Mexican people occasionally will go and just like be with an MLS team for a week and then send MLS people over here for a week or something because I, I do think they can learn from each other. Um, I do think Liga MX could learn way more from MLS, to be honest. Um, because I think that this regarding the fact that they might not be able to give you access to everything you want, they really do try to make the best available, like the best experience for any reporter that's there, disregarding if they have rights or not. And I think that's a little bit different when you just deal with Liga MX clubs. So just having someone that treats you professionally that way, that understands that it's your job, that you don't really want to criticize the players or the club, that you just really want to get a really good story out there. Um, I, I think I really appreciate that. So I think that's why I value a lot more whenever I have the chance to, to travel and, and work with the MLS. And that's why sometimes, like, I feel like you see, like, a lot of war stories in Mexican soccer when it comes – stuff that emerges regarding, like, tabloid-ish kind of stories because there is that lack of accessibility. So then you see these tabloid-like stories coming out fairly regularly as well. So I, I think a lot of that has to – issues would do with accessibility. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's like a domino effect because because of those stories coming out, that's when the press uh, also like like the press uh, people just limit the amount of access you have to the players. Yeah, so it just goes. It's like round and round. I mean, on the other hand, you you do appreciate some clubs actually letting um, like smaller outlets come into the clubs and and be at their like at the practice and everything, but then they start learning from whatever other other media people are doing, and it's not the best questions. They don't really understand. Like, they, they don't really like investigate what kind of article they want to write about earlier so they just like keep on hurting like all these these things that you shouldn't do as a journalist i mean you should be there to strive and to get a really better story than everybody else and not just get the gossip so i guess long yeah. story short what we're saying is uh thank you naive for getting uh whoever runs uh red bull they'll be joined the mexican soccer show right you know just because like whoever <laughs> runs they'll, 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 naive, they'll be on the pod right get a mexican player over there so here we go there we go cool. yeah, you, got, you got one no naive you got two to Paisano. We, we, got, we, we got Omir Fernandez. Omir Fernandez, he's a uh, Mexican-American. <laughs> so he was, his parents are, I think his parents are from Guerrero. Um, and, and he was born in the... Puebla. Yeah. From Guerrero. He born, he, yeah, Guerrero, and he was born in the Bronx. So, um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens in the next uh, cool. months or so. Now, you living in Puebla, York, or... Oh, Jersey oh, about... City. Jersey City. Jersey. That's my new home. Oh, wow. Before you go, Naive, uh, again, thank you. Um, as far as, you know, the quarantine, the social distancing, how is it over there in, in New York and where you're at and how are you seeing things? Can let everybody know. No, well, it's, it's, it's getting, you know, and it, I mean, I think it's it's been intense for like the past week and a half. No, I think um, the the situation is, you know, stay at home and then and, and just not be out as much as possible unless it's very necessary to go out and, and you know, buy food and stuff like that. Um, so we'll just follow along. I mean, I think what's going on in Spain and Italy is very serious, and I think mm -hmm. um, it should be something that, that we should pay attention to, you know, to, to try to avoid the mistakes that happen over there and not happen over here in the States. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of that sort of thing. But, you know, it's a, it's a good time to reflect. You know, all these all of a sudden, you know, everything kind of stopped, you know, and, and now you got all this time to <laughs> sort of work on and, 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 and have time for yourself, have time for the loved ones that you might have available and, and just think it through, you know, and work it through. <laughs> All right, Naib. Uh, anything that you're learning during this time that you're going to take time to learn to better yourself or anything else that you, these are personal questions we're asking. Like, is there anything that you're taking time? I'm going to do this by the time that we're with the social isolation. No, I want to learn more <laughs> about the gag and pressing. Actually, you know, oh, with, you uh, when it comes to uh, <laughs> the, the, the gang and pressing is something that uh, I just finished the Sono Marking by Michael Cox. And it, it's a really good book. I think a lot of people, if you're interested in the game, you got to read that book. All right. Uh, because it, it's a lot of the modern game and everything. And, um, you know, with, with uh, Red Bull Leipzig and what they've been doing over there in the Champions League. And, brilliant. Brilliant. And the and absolutely yeah. devastating. Yeah, so I mean, get understanding a little bit more of that style because you know there was that period of time where we were just so in love with the possession, 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 um, and now you know it's it's what what is the pressing and how the pressing works and counter pressing and all those terminology. You know, try to get a good hang of them. That was such a naive answer that makes me very God, happy. man, I miss, <laughs> I miss it. Oh God, naive, naive. Thank you, naive. 
Thank you. Know, beautiful. A Thank friend, you, a friend of the show, like always, brother. We miss you. Uh, we're so excited for everything that you're doing, and of course, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, you join us once in a while. Who knows how the social distancing comes around? Yeah. We have time, so uh, yeah, we'll have time, and I'll definitely <laughs> join in. You know, if uh, you know if the, if the, if the time schedules uh, you know fit, I'll definitely join. Awesome, for sure. awesome, naive. Muchísimas gracias, brother. Hope uh, safe. Un abrazo, and we'll we'll talk to you soon, man. Abrazos, se cuidan, suerte. All good, <laughs> éxito. Bye, Naib. Bye, bye. All right. Uh, good, uh, good, good, Naib answer there. You know, like yeah. some people might have said, you know, I'm, I'm searching inside my soul for you know, the meaning <laughs> of life and, and how, to, how I can become balanced, you know, as a person and, and, and you know, express myself. And Naib, Naib's learning about gig and pressing. <laughs> um, <laughs> talk about the office now. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, we want to. We want to. Doing gig and pressing. So says doing the office. <laughs> We want to uh, say hello to everybody on, on the chat that's on right now. And uh, um, here's the time we're going to have the next few minutes to just ask us questions. Um, so from from going out, I'll be, I'll be looking at the chat. So send us your questions like Cesar just typed on there. Um, we have first one to, for Tom. Uh, Gabby Silva said, Tom, give us some Chivas scoop. Playoffs on site, right? Right? Crying? And, uh, I don't know if you know any <laughs> Chivas. Me. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, that and we have. Before we do that, I know there was a question to Tom. One more time, Tom. Where exactly are you from? Before Naib kind of joined in uh, in the old England. Someone said know. Leeds. No, Cesar, do you know? Amy knows. No. Yeah, you're from Rochdale. I do. The Dale. Da- Dale. 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 Wait, what? Dale. Down the Yale. <laughs> Down the Yale. Pa- 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 <laughs> wait, time out. How, how are you not finished with that beer, <laughs> Amy? You've been like <laughs> drinking like. I finished. Or is that another one? Talking? Is that the second one? Who were you talking to? A- you, Amy. You. <laughs> oh, oh Amy's looking around. Really like... big beer. <laughs> I feel like you've been doing this for like the last twenty minutes. I'm like, there's no <laughs> more. It, it, it is it a big gun. Kind of, no, like. Uh, it's, it's because it's at the end. it's like at the very bottom already, and so I'm gonna have to eventually go all the. But you know, people are talking. This is a pod. This is a professional setting. All right, all right, here we go. We got some. Uh, we got some questions. Not a night out at Dave and Buster's, we saw. What? <laughs> Not a night out at Dave and Buster's, is it? Oh man. <laughs> oh man. I'm so sad. I never got. To go to uh, all right. I don't know how much about this one, but Alvaro kind of said, "Will Chilaquiles FC finally play?" The Colorful Kit FC. You know, when the Colorful Kit FC is free, they can finally uh, step up and actually uh, go up against us. Tom, Tom Marshall, I see you backing away. I'm afraid. From the Chilaquiles, that's all I'm going to say. A lot of years now. It's not just been one of the occasions. The gauntlet's been thrown down. Whenever they want to play, they're welcome. Because they can be off of all the Colorful Kit brothers of mine all over the United States and the world. And we'll play them whenever, whenever. <laughs> I like how there's a rivalry between the two FIFA teams who have literally never Okay, played. and here's uh They've literally never played against each other, but there's a rivalry. Angels asks a very important question. Which office character do each of you guys relate the most? Unfortunately, uh, so I see obviously every uh, person sees himself as a gym and I'm like, no. hey, maybe I'm Jim. But in reality, I'm probably You are Jim, says that. No, no, no. In reality, I think I I'm, I'm I'm a little bit of an Andy and an Oscar. I think a mixture of Andy and Oscar. And I'm just saying that because he's Mexican either. But... <laughs> All right. <laughs> Anybody else want to answer? What character do you uh, do you guys relate I, I think, the most? I think Sessa should name all of them for us you know what i mean what, I what he thinks we yeah, are yeah he'll know them better i've never oh, seen yeah, yeah let's do that i've only seen that. the uk one mate. okay let's see we so um oh god <laughs> oh god <laughs> no, there's something a little andy about you there's a little there's a there's you're, you have hints of michael scott but not not in a bad way not in a bad way <laughs> what are we talking about wait who are we talking about first me oh, okay. about? i'm michael scott oh. slash uh, there's a little oh, andy about you as well no. a, uh, amy uh no you're definitely you're definitely oscar adriana um uh, let's say you are you mean I know, oscar? uh i don't know adriana you're, you're kind of you're stanley like we'll, we'll, we'll give you stanley but you're not nearly as angry but you're really but i, I feel like you're a little bit more low-key and then <laughs> uh tom uh we'll give him uh most all right continue let's go on <laughs> <laughs> no idea what that means so uh, we'll, we'll go with 
Amy, Amy's, Amy's Meredith. Um, I'm wow. just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. You're, you're just joking. You're, you're Holly. You're Holly. Your you're, you're sense of humor is, is, is second to none. I would have to do that. Oh. All right, all right, all right. We got more questions. We got more questions. Uh, important one right here. When will L3 play again? I want to travel this summer. Buddy, I'm telling you right now. Yep, cancel the plans. Cancel. Um, cancel. We there don't is a, know. I'm sorry. We don't know. We don't know. There is a game schedule for May. I'm pretty sure that's not going to happen. May 30th in Denver. Um, it's it's beginning to see that the priority is probably seasons. So there's some game schedule in September. So we we don't know. I think there's going to be official games, but we really don't know. So we'll get yeah, that. that difficult one. It's, it's a difficult one to kind of predict anything, but... Even the you know the Nations League, if you look at the Copa America has yeah. been put back a year, you look at the UEFA, uh, the the Euro, the Euros have been put back for a year. So, I mean, you'd expect Concacaf to kind of do the same, but obviously that's not that's definitely not official. So we'll have to wait and see. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's a tough one because Concacaf also have the Gold Cup in 2021 as well. So it's not as yeah. easy to yeah. kind of put back, and then September qualifying starts, but. I, I think everything's gonna be pushed back. Yeah. The FIFA calendar is gonna is gonna be pushed because so many things need to happen, and I think that's where it's gonna redirect. It's just kind of seeing who's gonna start it out. What about if I if I throw this bad boy out? What about <laughs> Qatar and the U.S. Mexico Canada switches? Switch. Oh. Twenty twenty two in the states, Canada and Mexico. Twenty twenty six or. Or whenever it'd be um, in the winter, when when kind of the calendars have got back. But it seems like MLS and Liga Mekki, those in charge of MLS and Liga Mekki, like the idea of a slow build up to 2026, because then yeah. you'd have more time to kind of like unify the leagues to kind of kind of like build a little bit more of a partnership between the two and give Liga Mekki's teams, if they are going to do away with Pro Rel, like give them more of a chance to kind of get more attention and more investment leading up to the tournament. I like the I like the idea of what you said, Tom. But yeah, for sure. I, no, it just I don't know. I just thought of it then in the in the moment. <laughs> but I mean, it's this like is it ex- kind of makes sense. this is is this like a exclusive? This is like coming out. Like <laughs> Tom is about to write the biggest story. Talking about exclusives, Tom. <laughs> hey, I didn't hear that. I didn't hear. Sorry. We're just saying <laughs> that I just I just I just tweeted it out You're right now. Right. Daddy yeah. about exclusives. Is this an exclusive here, Tom? Is that what you're trying to tell us? Um, let's see. What do we got? What do we got? Um, this is important one. Best goal you've seen while covering a matched team, regardless of league, player, etc. We'll go with Adriana. And then Amy, Cesar, Tom, and then myself. Best goal you've seen while covering a match? I think it was one... Um, it was a Gerardo Torrado goal against the U.S. at the Azteca. What? Hey, yeah. Gerardo Torrado goal against. Yeah, it was Gerardo Torrado. 2001? No, no, no. Wait, let me look it up. I have to look up the year. But I'm, I'm pretty sure it was Torrado. Torrado scored in the World Cup. <coughs> Long shot. No. But not against the U.S. Wait, yes, what? Era un golazo. Mm-hmm. Let me see. Wait, Against the I'm U.S. That's kind of that's. I'm trying to think of all my. It was at the Azteca. Wait, maybe it wasn't Torrado then. Maybe. Uh, you, are you was thinking of? No, 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 no. Are you thinking of the 2009? It was who's our midfielder? Este no pardo el otro from Pumas. Castro. Castro. It was Castro. There you yeah, go. that's the one. Castro. That's the one. Yeah, it was Castro. Yeah. That's the one. Yeah, he's playing same yeah, position. Yeah, Yeah, yeah. That was a that was a great goal. Yeah, and then if Ryan Juarez took it over and uh, stunned Mr. De- Landon Donovan and gave it to who scored that goal? Ah, uh, Osorio? No, 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 no. It was um, he 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 was barely with the national team. Uh, well, I'll remember. All right, all right, cool, cool. Uh, Amy, Google it. best goal you've seen covering a match team, regardless of league. Oh man, I have like three that automatically popped into my head. Um, wasn't covering. Well, we were covering the game, but we were there as fans. So obviously, Chucky goal. We were covering. Germany. Uh, we were covering it. Um, Cesar was 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 there for Slatas' first goal ever yeah. for LA Galaxy nice. against LAFC, and then um, Vela's like half bicycle kick goal against Tim Howard to help him like break the record. I think it was last season um, at Bank of California Stadium. That was also a pretty good one. And then I think 
Jonathan's uh, Gold Cup winning goal. Pretty, pretty like recent ones, actually. I've seen a lot of good goals live, but yeah, I think there's like a four, there's like a three or four way tie there for those <laughs> for me. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, Cesar? Yeah, two way tie between Zlatan uh, scoring on his debut and then Paul Aguilar yeah. uh, against the US uh, in CONCACAF Cup. That was, uh, I mean, that was, that was yeah. incredible. That was, and just to see like, the Rose Bowl just like erupt and just yeah. like just like the view from the yeah. press but I just like pff, um, I mean it was crazy stole yeah. mine yeah yeah I, I actually I was gonna I was gonna say that one as well I've actually written that I was doing a doing a piece the other day and I wrote that down <laughs> as like the best goal that I've seen live um but yeah I mean I wasn't covering it but oh I, I was uh, I, I was in the stadium when Ryan Giggs in 99 scored against Arsenal that ridiculous goal from like the halfway line that, that, well, that, that I think is the best goal I've ever seen um, I think the Paul Aguilar one, I'd say I was actually in the stadium not covering the game as well for that, that Slatan goal against LAFC, which was ridiculous. Um, and then the other one, I think, would be Idivin Lozano against uh, against Germany, yeah. just because, you know, it was like a game at that time where you're like, Mexico are doing quite well here. You know what I mean? The, the game's going quite well, the game's going quite well, but you still got that in the back of your head that, no, Germany are just going to score and, right. you know, all the good work is going to kind of you know, yeah. be wasted, and then and then he scored that goal, and I don't know. You just like obviously outside the stadium, like you knew how many Mexico fans were there, but when he scored that goal, the place went absolutely crazy. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. and, and and I also, you know, I put I put a line in a recent story as well that um, you know, not not every team can win a World Cup. You know what I mean? Not every nation will win a World Cup, but Mexico fans that night in Moscow and probably around the world. I think it's would have celebrated more than French more than the France supporters who actually won the World Cup. Like, I don't yeah. I don't think Mexico that's a had a mini earthquake <laughs> that day. Yeah, yeah, oh, that was I think that was proved to be Yeah, it says I don't hey, no, no. <laughs> 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 no, but it, I think I think all of us do carry that uh significance to that goal so much cuz I think that night or the morning after like my yeah. dad I was talking to my dad and he said, you know, this this is it. Like anything else that happens at this point is just gravy compared to this moment. Like them winning, seeing them score, seeing Chucky score, and everything is it's pretty significant. He was, and it was on Father's Day, so I think every Mexican dad was just incredibly happy. Ah, <laughs> uh, let's see, let's see. For me, um, wait, Tom, weren't you at the Raúl Jiménez Azteca goal? I was gonna bring that one up. Yeah. Well, no. no. No, no, no. Okay, okay, okay. I, thought, I, thought I had was... just get well. I had. I just want to say this too, because that Paulo Aguilar goal was pretty significant for me. I think I had just given birth to Ollie like six weeks before that, or something like that, maybe less. But I just remember like he was like wrapped up in a little burrito, and like I was watching, that <laughs> yeah. trying to not to wake him up. But yeah, no, that's a pretty sick goal too. That's like a show for the Jimenez, uh like Chilena though. Like yeah. that's definitely like that one was definitely incredible too. I can only imagine what the stadium was like too. But I felt like that was such a relief. Like there was just like so much pressure building up for Mexico. Yeah. Like after all the problems they had, and that was just I don't know, man. That was that was, that was such a relief. Uh let's see, let's see. For me, I'll, I'll put two of them. One of them just I guess being live, not necessarily covering. It was 2011 Gio's goal. Um, oh, was, was, oh, I was God, obviously yeah. there, not covering. After that. 2011, you know, uh, Food Next Nation and the idea of writing and blogging and all that came about when that night I went home and we're like, why is no one talking about this on, a, on, on you know, in anywhere except for our deep, you know, in, in the webs of, of the forums of, of Mexican soccer that we had with big soccer back then. Um, so that definitely was it. I, I, I remember in, the, in a half just almost crying and being like, U.S. is going to do it again. This is Dos Acero. Like, it's been yeah. 10 years since the freaking World Cup. And uh, they're <laughs> still continuing to do it. So, you know, Gio's Golasco is probably there. And then uh, working, for some reason, I go back, and I don't even know when it is. Guardado scored against Venezuela. Like, it was a corner kick. I think oh. as far as, like, where I was live as... as what year was this? It's, I think it's got to be, like, 2014, 2013. I was in the press box, and I saw Sorry. him. Like, it was a corner kick. And it went to Guardado, and Guardado just hit it with, like, as far as, like, somebody, like, technically, like, the best goal that I've seen. Um, I always remember that goal being just how much uh, talent Guardado has. So, we'll see. Um, and then, yeah, of course, the Paolo Aguilar goal. I mean, I've yeah. never 
I've still, even though I was at the World uh, the World Cup with the Chukis goal and it went crazy and so loud, I think it was louder at the at the in Pasadena. Like, well, just, I mean, that's a huge capacity too. Yeah, I mean, but how huge, many? Huge what was capacity. it in, in in Russia? Was what like maybe seventy thousand? I think in Pasadena there was nine. There was over ninety. I, I just remember erupting it so much, and we were in the. Well, press I think box. we were having this discussion, right? Like we had this discussion in Leon. I was like, "Hey, like real, like real talk. Like, what was more significant? Like the Geo goal coming back and winning the gold cup, or you know, like the Chucky Germany goal." And I think on. I think you could argue, and to some extent, because it was a championship final, and you're coming back, that Geo goal is pretty. You know, well, it's also because of the rivalry, too. It's because yeah. of the rivalry. Yeah, and the rivalry. Because, the because Jew it was against meant, the U.S. meant more. Because, yeah. All three of those are there, but we'll see that. But I could say, I just remember being so loud looking at Cesar. You know, the whole don't cheer in the press box thing that, you know. <laughs> that, <laughs> that, dude, it, does, it goes out the window in his Mexico. That was, because it came one goal, two goals, and everybody was cheering. And I think, you know, Gabe and all the Soccer United people and the CONCACAF people were just kind of like, yeah, we're not going to do anything. Everybody erupted. I mean, no matter what it was, just because it was just it was that good. So that was that was a lot of fun. So, um, how many white claws did you have that night? No, white claws weren't there that night, guys. Sorry, Juan. Sorry yeah, that. <laughs> we'll do that. I seem to remember it was a good night after as well. Ah, that was a that was a fun night. We went. We were actually in the U.S. hotel. Because Tom, bougie Tom, gets in the best of rooms and he had a huge suite. <laughs> and uh, we happen to have, we're in this little area. This is hilarious because we're in the, the little area having some drinks. And we see the, uh, all the U.S. players just come in and have like drinks and, you know, wherever. It was, and, it was uh, Michael Bradley. It was also uh, uh, Tim Brad Howard. Guzon. It was Tim Howard. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Cesar, so nice. Cesar, you, Cesar hey, so Tim, nice. You're my, you're my favorite ever player. I've always liked him. Cesar, Cesar <laughs> leaves our group. Cesar leaves our group and goes to say hi to, to Bradley, who's already lost this game, to go say hi to him and say, hey, man, just want to let you know I'm a big fan. Like, Bradley's like, fuck, man, we just, sorry, Gus, what the heck? <laughs> Oh, I think I think actually what happened was I went up and I was just like, "Hey, man! Like, I just want to let you know I'm a Mexico fan." And he's like, "He's like, Dude, that's not a good way to like start a conversation." Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, fun, like, fun, fun, fun times. Fan, I was like, "But if we're up to me, like, like if we're like if we're up to me, like, I would love to play like you at the Mexico national team. I think you're a great player." Blah oh, blah God. blah. And he just and like yeah, he was just not not having it. <laughs> they, oh, that's funny, funny. All right, guys. Um, let's see. Rafa's header against the U.S. in Columbus. Um, yeah. yeah, that was big yeah. as well. That was yeah. big. Actually, yeah, you're right. Yeah. I was there. After the election as well. Mm -hmm. It yeah. was. Yeah, it was kind of tense. I remember we weren't really sure if there was gonna like be like like people booing like was, the Mexican national team, and they were kind of worried about that. It was, it was Thursday. The game was, was on Thursday. The, obviously, Tuesday election was on on Tuesday. It was two days, and I remember mm -hmm. that was the, one of the first times. I've been to a lot of Mexico US games since like way in the early, you know, 2000s and uh, actually 90s. And uh, the fans, the US and Mexico fans have always been very like, you know, I mean, I've heard some racist stuff from both sides. I've heard, you know, from like the old 2000s, just bad stuff. That game, I'll always remember that I've always just felt like the US fans, because of what, you know, the election and the Trump and everything it said. So many U.S. fans just kind of being like applauding Mexican fans or just there wasn't that animosity. And there's something that I'm like, it was definitely over um, more than soccer because people came up to Mexico fans that were there and all this other stuff. So that's definitely very memorable. So thanks for bringing that up. Uh, and Amy, is that uh, is that Ollie over there with the dinosaurs? Is that... Yep. Yep. That's Ollie right there. <laughs> <laughs> He's being quiet though. He knows it. He knows it. All right, all right, all right. All right. Uh, Juan says Tom, keep up their great work on Twitter. <laughs> Alexi Lawless can't even tie his shoes. That's what that's supposed to be. But... <laughs> oh wait, one one more question. Angel says funniest thing you guys have seen in a press box. Mm, I mean, definitely the the Sholos games. Like I've definitely seen some like. It, it's it's weird just because like they always like allow like like fans like do sitting in the press box so you'll see like people like screaming and yelling and like smoking like right next to you so that's like a little weird sometimes um but one of the members of the of the luca like one of the like 
like uh, like staff members from Thaluka were just like cursing up a storm, just like left and right, and like slamming his like fist like down on the table like throughout the match. Uh, that's 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 about it. I don't. I guess it was pretty funny when uh, that one time. I don't know if it was technically not in the press box, but when Pioko was coaching uh, Sholos, <laughs> and he got thrown out of a match. And then he went in the stands and then got into an argument with the fan in the stands <laughs> after he got thrown out of the game. And then the next game, he decided it'd be fun just to run around the stadium. And I don't know, it was a little bizarre. But anyhow, yeah, that's just what comes to mind. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, Tom? I, I, I watched a League of MX final in the press box next, next to a baby. <laughs> a newborn baby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even joking. I'm not even joking. It was Guerrero against uh, Santos. Um, and I was just there, uh, you know, taking place and all that. Next thing, you know, little baby next to you <laughs> in the family. And I'm like, how did these lot get, get press passes? But <laughs> he wrote a really good story, to be fair. It was, uh, it was probably better than mine. <laughs> uh, I'll go and then we'll let the ladies end it. Um, to me... <sighs> Uh, I think Tom, Cesar, I think you were both in this press conference when all of a sudden we see probably one of the hardest working journalists that everybody knows. It was my, it was my question this as well. It was when I was asking it, I remember it. Tom, Tom's <laughs> asking a question, right? And I'll paint the picture. We're all looking at Piojo. Piojo, right? Mm, no, was no? that Osorio? Or Osorio? Yeah, yeah. Osorio? Oh, it was Osorio, and he's ready to answer the question. And we see John Sutcliffe get on his knees and go and start crawling in the middle of the press box. <laughs> While Osorio is, you know, very, well, we got to, you know, he's very, and we're all just like, forget what Osorio is doing and laughing. <laughs> I mean, I took out my phone. Everyone's taking out their phone, looking at John Sutcliffe. Like, just the dedication this guy had because he needed to get to the other side and he couldn't leave and it was live and all. And he did. And he didn't want to be passing, but it was just like and like yeah, it was just kind of funny. Just like a um, man, man, like he definitely has like a lot of integrity. But just to see him kind of go on all fours, just kind of. <laughs> definitely, has got to be one of the funniest things that I've seen uh, in press boxes. Or I won't mention, but there was other journalists trying to get in a fight because we were not allowed to, to take pictures um on the field or, or anything and it was like the beginnings of no live streaming so you're not allowed to do that and they wanted to take this journalist guy's phone away and he's like you're gonna have to fight me um and it's it gets kind of funny on the on the press box i so will see that so all right adriana um i was i was remembering when when during one of those mexico usa games i was uh, my press pass was with the u.s press i was doing some stuff for radio um uh, way like 10 like 10 years ago so I was sitting with the U.S. press at the Azteca during the game, and it was when Michael Orozco scored first. And it was like, I think it was like the first time that the U.S. had actually um, scored first against Mexico. So they were like so eager about like, oh, my God, we, we might actually win for the first time at the Azteca and stuff like that. And then when Mexico scored again, we got like all this beer like raining on top of it. I mean, mm. I knew I mean, I've been there as a fan. I knew that was going to happen probably. Um, but then people realized that that was the u.s press section so they did it like even more so so i was just like eh, okay just be it I mean, i'm not gonna cry about it i know these things happen but everyone was like oh there's beer everywhere what are we gonna do like <laughs> like like panicking and i was like oh yeah just take out whatever um so yeah that, i, I kind of remember that yeah the, i can in terms of like um, press boxes in mexico that's the i've only had one bad experience and it was america against toronto and toronto beat him remember when the, and then they then they they played Chivas in the final of the mm -hmm. Cup Champions League. and you know obviously some American and there's no kind of behind the press box in the Azteca and this was I think it was before it was it was the uh, NFL came in and did that yeah, whole border it renovated mm -hmm. it was like and it's still actually now it's completely open yeah so you've got like fans right behind the press box all they do is they throw their beer they're like, Boop. <laughs> they're like they were like no they were actually aiming at me like 100%. There was only one guy, but he was just being an idiot because he, he thought I was from Toronto. And he was just like, and I had a raincoat as well. So I put my raincoat on and he kept throwing stuff like salsa, you know, like, I don't know. It was bad though. It was the only time when I was like, this is absolutely, like, I don't feel good about this. Um, but, you know, it happens, man. Just just idiots, you know what I mean? Yeah. It doesn't only really happen in it. The worst time, and I, it's funny, and I'll say, I'll say this before we go to Amy. 
the way where I got stuff thrown at me was covering Mexico in Costa Rica 2013 when Mexico lost when we were almost eliminated from the game and US you know San Susi scored right I was at that game covering in the press and the press was kind of like the Leon Amy and Tom we were in the seats and then they just roped it off and then all the fans were all around us so when Costa Rica scored first they threw a bunch of water and beer and everything and we're covering our computers and then Mexico scored and they threw even more <laughs> and then Costa Rica scored and now we're out of the World Cup and it, I'm like I'm like depressed I'm like I can't believe they're still throwing stuff like they're like <laughs> laughing at us you're not going to the World Cup and then chance started happening Mexico's not going to the World Cup like it was just sad I'm like Wow, the first year we do journalism and we, here we are trying to cover the world, you know, Mexico and English and we're not going to go to the World Cup, you know. And then finally when Chicharito got the news, the big cameras of him smiling mm -hmm. that they're in the World Cup, we got more crap thrown at us. Like it was just an all day. It didn't matter. It was bad, good. Oh, man. But it was fun times, I guess. We'll do that. To end it, Amy, the craziest thing you've seen, press box. I think the question was funniest. Funniest. But I I, ironically enough, or not ironically, but it was my very first game ever of Mexico versus Uruguay in Phoenix, the Copa America. Um, first time ever, like, covering a game, a Mexico game, right? And so, yeah, we're in the press box, and Mexico's winning, and people are cheering, and so you hear that in the, you know, in the state, or in the press box, like, please don't celebrate the goals or whatever, right? And then... Um, I think, like, Uruguay scored at the end, or I don't know, there was a point where Uruguay scored because it was 3-1, and the guy that was covering Uruguay just celebrated, like, ridiculously loud. Like, it was, like, two or three different journalists that were there, all the rest from Mexico, but he just celebrated, like, super ridiculously loud, like, where it was, like, painfully obvious. And I no, he had it. a, he was calling the game. He was up on the, he was calling the game, like, it was his radio soon, and he didn't get, like, an actual broadcast booth. And he was celebrating because he was narrating the game and he narrated with go <laughs> And we're all like this guy's yeah, this game. It was like so it was so apparently loud that everybody just like turned around and like that's my first game too. So I was just like, um sir, they literally just said no celebrating. But um, that was one. And then the most recent one was a press conference ridiculousness was Wisa and I are waiting. <laughs> I know for, <laughs> you know which one. We and I are waiting for Leon versus LAFC, you know, CONCACAF Champions League press conference. And we're just waiting there, sitting down, whatever. We still turns around. I'm still looking forward, so I have no idea what's around me. But he just turns around, like, super serious, too. And he goes, oye, ustedes son de Leon? And I turn around, and it's just, like, PR Leon people decked out in Leon gear. And, like, they're, like, <laughs> super happy. Like, yeah, yeah, we are. But it was... The dumbest thing. That it was dumb because, <laughs> like, you they walk in with full on Leon hat, white Leon, Le like green. I mean, they almost had like a lion stuffed animal into the press <laughs> box, and they're walking in, and everyone's looking at them. And I don't know why we we were waiting for a long time. It was a long day. Amy's looking up, and I'll go, "Usted son de Leon, verdad?" And they're like, "Yeah, we are. Yeah, we are." <laughs> <laughs> I'm like facing forward, so I'm like, who's he asking? How does he know these people are from? And then it's just like, like super Leon people, and I'm like, wow, oh, that was stupid. And then he he started laughing at his own joke. So it was funny. It was, I, that was, it was kind dumb. Of it was a little bullying. I'm sorry, I'll be there. <sighs> Guys, um, uh, Jason says, I remember that those Uruguay journeys were freaking the hell out. All oh, the journalists were freaking the hell out. Yeah, Jason was yeah, there. Yeah, it was. It was super loud. I, yeah. Oh yeah, because Jason and I were also were like Rafa, yeah. like. We don't know, man. And then yeah. he goes and like scores that game too. And so yeah. we're just like, oh, good, good, we're good, good. stop talking about him. <sighs> All right, guys. That's a lot of questions. This is the, this is the longest we've ever done with the Mexican soccer show. Almost an hour yeah. and thirty minutes. Um, but we're uh, we're gonna finally give you guys some time to take a drink or do whatever you're doing in the social distancing quarantena type of. But I uh, hope you guys would enjoy this. Um, we'll go around one last thing that we can say, um, the message or however it is. And uh, yeah, and then we'll we'll finish it off. So we'll start off with Adriana, Amy, Cesar, and then I'll Tom, and then I'll I'll end the uh, show. The, Go for um, it, Adriana. I'm I'm thinking about the wash your hands and social distancing and stuff like that. So, <laughs> um, obviously great to be with you guys. I mean, sad that it has to be under these same circumstances. You know what? I was thinking about this. Usually, whenever we have tournaments during the summer, I'm like, oh no, I want to get a chance like to miss soccer for a while. So then when it comes back, I'm really excited because you have, like, the Gold Cup and Copa America. I usually don't get, like, a rest for, from soccer anytime. 
And then now that it's really, really gone, like everywhere, I, I miss it so much. So it just like, I don't know, it gives you like a perspective on how much like these things can just like, like screw up everything that we're used to. So hopefully it'll be back soon and hopefully we'll be able to talk together um, about whatever it does come back. So um, be safe, wash your hands and great talking to you guys. All right. All right. It's true because I think we're looking at the calendar every year like, oh, this year we haven't had a break in the summer for such a long time, says our Tom. Yeah. And I remember those days. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this mm-hmm. <is> we're, <laughs> we're like, oh, we haven't had a summer. It would be nice to have oh, our summer. We don't want it. El we miss you. Amy, did you finally finish your beer? I did. I did. That's why I turned off the camera at one point because I was like, I'll just, I'll just finish this off like, yeah. without having to. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, I'll take a, I'll take a page out of John Oliver's uh, book when he had his latest episode of Last Week Tonight. Um, things are scary, or you know, things are uncertain, which makes them scary because um, we don't know what's going to happen. But you're allowed to feel bad about things that seem small and petty and one of those things is definitely soccer you know from a personal standpoint i was supposed to be heading to a friendly this week right and for me obviously as you can see behind me it's a it's a nice little escape from my everyday life my real life so that's something that i'm thinking about and dealing with right now and selfishly am feeling bad about and feeling slightly angry about so just let yourself feel those things um and eventually <laughs> well, and eventually, you know, things aren't going to be the same, but this is going to pass in some shape, way, or form. Something is going to be modified, and we could go back to a different version of reality. So, you know, we'll get there, guys. Just be. How's, how's Batman doing, Amy? Oh, he's fine. <laughs> Wait, Ollie, do you, do you want to show everybody your Batman toy? I want to see it, Ollie. Yeah. Is, is that the Ben Affleck yeah. Batman? Is that uh, yeah, which bat? Which which Batman is it? This is my brothers buying them toys every time they go to Target. This is not me. So. <laughs> <laughs> there it is, Cesar. So three reasons why Jim Halpert wouldn't make it by top five uh, power. Number one, he's a terrible husband. He's a genuinely ter- <laughs> um. No, in all seriousness, uh, stay home. Wash your hands. I'll keep this short. Uh, just did. It's it's extremely difficult time. So hopefully uh, we've been able to give you a little bit of a I don't know, just kind of like a little bit of a break here. Um, I'm looking forward to recording more podcasts. Looking forward to seeing what we're gonna be doing with this podcast going forward. Because obviously we don't have nearly as much content as we used to have. Uh, but going forward, I, I mean, I guess one of the first things we're gonna be doing is gonna have a FIFA tournament. Um, we already have, I think it's about like 11 or 12 of us. Uh, that I read, take a part of this FIFA tournament. Hopefully, we could get it up to 16, so we can have like a full group stage and whatnot. So that'll be pretty exciting going forward. But uh, yeah, wash your hands, stay safe, stay home, and uh, yeah, no thanks, thanks for tuning in. Cool, cool, cool. Lord Marshall. Yeah, uh, yeah. Stay <laughs> safe and all that. Keep it real. <laughs> and um, and look out for the FIFA tournament. Yeah. Well, any World Cup coming up? Coming your way. Yeah. Can I have a... Uh, Adriana, have you got FIFA or no? No, I'm a regular... <laughs> She's got N64. N64. N64, Tom. the chat, man. Read the chat. I'm the chat, man. She has to play like FIFA 98 or something. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, oh, right. so anyway, we got, we got, whenever, whenever we get to do like a Mario Kart tournament, I'm, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got a mini World Cup coming out in uh, the next few days. Weasel's going to be doing the draw. Yeah, yeah. So uh, stay tuned for that. Hopefully tomorrow. Hopefully. We're just uh, we're just finalizing the last few places in the yeah. tournament. So uh, cool, cool, cool. so yeah, give us a shout out. But yeah, looking forward to it. Looking forward to winning it. And uh, yeah, keep it real. <laughs> oh. Oh. Don't worry, guys. I won't be playing because I'm horrible. Uh, to me, uh, I'm not. You know, Amy's the voice of a reason of our chat, saying all of the good things. I'll just have to add is take it seriously. For those of you that still do not. Um, you know, it's, uh, the faster that everyone stays in their house, the faster we can all go home, um, to our, to our work that has affected us in so many different ways from us in the sporting world, but then all of the, all the different stories that I hear from, you know, things shutting down. So, uh, hopefully you know, just it's, it's two, three weeks that we can all just, and we can all go back to, um, so take it seriously, wash your hands, do all that. You know what you need to do, social distancing, but take it seriously and stay home. Um, we'll see.
um yeah i will be hopefully uh, doing the draw and we'll see we're, we'll see where it goes if you have any ideas or you have any expertise as far as like tech stuff that we can maybe go live and maybe i can call some games or have you know all of us there <laughs> call some you yeah, know maybe the final cool. or the semi-final let us know we're still we finally got a live stream going like that's <laughs> that's how that's how much we're behind on it because it's just us but i want to thank uh Kadi for taking the time also, Mr. Eugene and Naive for, for jumping on and just saying hello. Um, and all of you guys who stayed on the chat, many of you guys, Juan Vargas, T. Vader, Jason, um, all of you guys, Angel, AFCBNG. Um, we're going to try to do this again. Um, we'll have our podcast on Monday like we do, recorded, but this is these live shows, social hours. We'll make it a theme, maybe have a trivia night where we just have like Mexican soccer. We've been thinking of trying to see if we can all watch that FIFA documentary of the World Cup and uh, just have live commentary of, you know, of, of, of it all and hear your guys' questions and comments. So we'll see where it goes. Uh, appreciate everybody jumping on. Amy, Adriana, Tom, Cesar. Uh, stay safe and uh, hopefully we'll get through this soon but if not well, we're all here kind of together on the Mexican Stock Show Amigos we so signing off and uh, saying hi bye to Ollie with their wait is that a new toy? oh yeah he had a bunch of toys quarantine oh, is calling little... for just toys alright <laughs> there you go alright guys we'll talk to you all soon we're gonna finish this edition of the live quarantine social hour Mexican Soccer Show hasta la próxima